All right. Welcome, everyone. Good evening or good morning, depending on where you are in the world. It's time for Nighttime Astro Live. Hi, I'm Shannon Lemaire. I'm your host and owner and operator of Lunar Ladies, where we meet at nighttime to take a look at the stars and, and glean the wisdom and take it into our dream space to rejuvenate at night with our guides, our power animals, our angels, and we wake up refreshed and ready to go. <laughs> okay, so tonight's topic is Venus in Gemini. Now I'm going to pick up where I left off from yesterday's nighttime or last night's nighttime astrolive with the lover's card. We're continuing the theme. Lover's card. Woohoo! Yes, Venus in Gemini, the twins, healing with Archangel Raphael. So we're going to pick up uh, that theme, and we're going to take a look at the event chart for the moment, the exact moment when Venus entered into the sign of Gemini for her journey, which is a little bit less than a month. So from tonight, June 22nd, 2022, through July 18th, Venus will be moving through the sign of Gemini. And what does that mean? It means that Venus will be activating all your Gemini planets, all your Gemini ruled house. That means activating Mercury energy, Gemini, the lower mind, the thoughts, the, the, the words and the behaviors, thought, word, deed. So this is time for alchemy through the power of love to the goddess Aphrodite. Hi, Sherry. Welcome. Speaking of ultra awesome Geminis in the house. So Sherry, for you, this means that your Gemini planets are getting activated, right? Sun, moon. I think your Mercury is in Taurus, which is great. Very uh, good, solid, grounded space for the Mercury mind to, to move all that Gemini energy into Taurus vibrations, which is safety, security, investments, uh, knowing your worth and your value and really grounding into that every day. That's how you, you combine your Mercury and Taurus with your Gemini sun and moon and they start swimming and working together. Right, so this is exciting for exciting time for those of you like Sherry with lots of Gemini planets in their natal chart. Yes, isn't that exciting? So we're going to look at the chart. I've got some fun things to show you, some fun ways to connect with uh, playing on astro.com and uh, looking at different types of planetary bodies that can tell us the story because we're looking up and we're uh, asking for the wisdom to download into our crown chakra that activates the energy of your higher self that then starts to drive this beautiful vehicle around the town. <laughs> we don't want the lower chakras that are maybe out of balance to be driving the car. We want them in the back, you know, in the baby seats being nourished and taken care of. And then we want the higher self to be driving the car. <laughs> So the higher self is uh, comes through the physical body through the crown chakra, and we're looking up with our crowns open to download the wisdom of the universe, the sun, the moon, the stars. Ooh, Venus in Cancer, so you'll have a Venus return uh, starting July nineteenth. Uh, Sherry, that's when Venus will enter into her sojourn through the sign of Cancer, but before she gets to Cancer. She's going to have some fun in Gemini. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, let's go ahead first. I want to talk about, i show you the symbol for Venus, the symbol for Gemini, so you can easily find it in your chart. And then we're going to take a look at the astrology to get the story, get the wisdom. So I made this graphic, and I'll post it in... Um, in the Facebook group, if you want to download it, take a, a snapshot picture of it. But here we have Venus and Gemini. So this is the planetary astrological symbol or glyph for uh, Venus. Notice that it looks, Venus looks like a handheld mirror. So this is a, 
a good symbol to kind of start tuning into the energy, the essence, the vibration of Venus. Venus, one of her symbols is a mirror. Okay, so those of you who may be from my age group may have grown up with Miss Marianne in Romper Room and she would look into her magical mirror and she would say hi to all the children. <laughs> and I always wanted her to say my name, but it wasn't a very popular name back in the 70s. So I waited with faded breath to no avail. <laughs> I don't believe she ever said Shannon, but I, was, I watched every morning. <laughs> so we have the handheld mirror. So Venus, part of Venus power is self-love. That's her first energy that says, hey, I am, uh, when I roll through the energy of Taurus, it's self-love feeling worthy, knowing my value and coming and being nurtured and grounded and secure in who I am through looking in the Venusian mirror through Taurus. Okay, so that's uh, the sign that she rolls. She also rolls Libra, the sign of relationships. So in order to have a healthy relationship, we have to be able to look in our own mirror and like what we see. And if we don't like what we see, we stay and look longer and find out, well, why? What don't I like? Where is that coming from? What's that about? When did that thought come into my head? Or did somebody tell me that I uh, was less than? And sometimes we get those messages, especially as young women or young girls, we might get that from the media or society that might say, this is our version of beautiful. You're not that. Therefore, you're not beautiful. And we can probably talk to a lot of people in, the, in our Western cultures who are people of color when all they would see in the media were blonde, blue-eyed women, right? And that was the ideal of vision of beauty, Aphrodite energy. And so people who um, are of color may have looked at something like that and go, well, there's no possible way. I can look like that, therefore, does that make me less than? So that sometimes was a way that uh, marketers would sell things to, and, and kind of limit us to feel not good enough because if we don't feel good enough, we'll buy more products. Attempting to find that beauty, but the beauty is within. The beauty comes from when you look in the mirror and you love what you see. So that's gonna be a practice during this Venus in Gemini cycle. Here's the symbol of Gemini. It has two lines and two top lines. This is the sign of the twins. So this is our inner kind of, this is where we first start to talk. So Venus moves from her home sign of Taurus and then she moves into Gemini. When Gemini is the energy, the air uh, element sign that sets us up for healthy relationships. Gemini is once you feel safe and secure in who you are through Taurus, you begin to have original thought. You begin to start communicating with other people. Communication, or the first hello, is the first step towards forming healthy relationships. Hi, my name is Shannon. Will you be my friend or do you want to play? That's like the first kind of Gemini um, uh, motivation is reaching out, connecting, saying hello, introducing the self, and wanting to know who you are, and starting that conversation. And like, always invite a Gemini to a big party, because they're going to be breaking the ice left and right, getting people talking. Gemini is the sign, social butterfly, they can think of a topic and find some uh, similarity with anybody in the room and just start chatting and having a great time. So you want Geminis at your party because people will have fun. They'll, they'll get to know each other. They won't feel by themselves. You introduce them to a Gemini. Also, if you move to a new area, get a Gemini as a friend. You'll know everybody by the end of the week. <laughs> they rule siblings. Uh, Gemini rule siblings and your neighborhood, your neighbors, people close by, short trips, Short conversations, hello, how are you? Want to play, great, let's meet at three, have some fun, say goodbye. <laughs> That's the Gemini energy. So when Venus brings her essence into Gemini, 
It's saying, I like who I see in the mirror. And then my mindset begins to shift and change so that I start merging into relationships from a place of a healthy uh, in inner security so that I can step outside myself, especially for introverts, and reach out and start connecting and communicating with other people. Um, the, the vibration here is looking for that twin, looking for that person who is like-minded or it maybe likes something similar, right? So remember, we're operating under the uh, Sabian symbol for 2022 is wild geese flying in formation, meaning I want to find people who are similar to me, maybe have the same sense of humor, like the same kind of things, uh, are interested in doing uh, similar things, like let's go here, let's go there. Gemini is about short trips, short meetings, coffee, um, you know, so this is a great time, especially if you're single and wanting to open up your space to be looking for potential new partners, uh, this is a great time to say hello, go out for coffee, something very simple, short, uh, quick. Gemini just wants to get to know you, kind of go, to, go on a lots of these coffee dates kind of thing. Make new friends, uh, introduce yourself, go to places, take a risk, go to a place and go, hmm, I really like this artist, so I'm gonna to go to their um, opening and meet other people who are interested in this artist, right? Or, you know, meetups or things where people are, you know, have a similar interest so that there's an automatic op uh, uh, opening for connection. So this is about connection uh, leading to the next air sign, which would be Libra is relationships. But you can't get into relationships if you don't know how to say hello. <laughs> so practice saying hello. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to look for Gemini in your natal chart to find out where Venus is moving through your life right now. Like for me, I'm a Gemini rising. That means Gemini rules my first house of body, physical body. And so Venus is transiting through my first house. So it's a great time to uh, be doing mirror work, liking what I see. And if, you know, if my body needs more exercise, it's a great time to start a new exercise program. But Gemini is going to get bored real easy. So you want to be variety. Try this. Go to Zumba today, yoga tomorrow, go for a walk the next day, try some swimming, right? Keep it light, keep it simple. So my Venus and Gemini first house intention is um, I have two bicycles <laughs> and I'm going to get rid of both of them and trade it in for a bicycle that I really like. Because one's kind of like, doesn't really fit my, my height. The other one's like a racing bicycle. I'm, like, yeah, I'm just not into racing right now. I just want a cruiser. I want to hang out, flatlands, ride my bike to the grocery store, to the beach, just hang out on a mellow bike. So I'm going to fix up my two bikes, sell them, and get the new bike <laughs> of my dreams for the summer. So that's a way that I can get something I like start doing something I like that's going to benefit my health and wellness. And I'm going to feel better about myself because I'll be out bicycling. It's easy to move around. I can get to places pretty fast, faster than walking or running if I'm biking. Um, and it's also a nice way to uh, be with the people, say hello, and see what happens. And be in motion because Gemini is mutable, likes to keep moving. So since Sherry's with us, I know that Gemini rules her 11th house. And so for Sherry, you would look at your 11th house and go, okay, 11th house, what's that mean? First of all, it's a house of friends. It's a house of groups, house of tribe. So this would be like, let's build, let's, Venus wants to activate love in your tribe, wants to activate maybe, you know, building your women's groups or showing up in women's group more often. So here's Sherry and Lunar Ladies, which is like a woman's group, although we have some amazing men in our group. I love them. Always more welcome, the more the merrier. But this is a great way to show up. You're in a group. It's feminine. It's, it's interesting. It's piquing her curiosity, and she can have fun here. That would be a great way, to, as an example, to see uh, Venus 
in your 11th house. Also, Venus is crowned, uh, 11th house is crowned chakra. So you could be doing some activation of your crown, uh, setting energy around your future, especially maybe a future relationship dream that you would like to have. <laughs> Let Venus whisper to you um, what that looks like for the highest ideal. I remember yesterday we were talking about the highest ideal. And so Venus wants to help us because the highest ideal for our lives is born from love. All right, so let's move into the event chart. Let's see what Venus and Gemini, the imprint, is all about. Let's find out. <laughs> so exciting. All right, so here we are with uh, the moment uh, Venus crossed over the line, moved out of Taurus into Gemini, happened tonight at 5.35 p.m. here in the West Coast, June 22nd, 2022. So Sherry, she's got her sacred numbers down. This is a 22 energy, right? 22nd, and then we've got uh, Venus going into Gemini, which is about the two the lovers and all the twos in the tarot lessons around twos twins and you might have noticed in my announcement let me see me go over there i really love this artwork look at that right this is a psyche and eros so i'm really feeling that eros energy with the twin soulmate the partner coming in from a higher place like the angelic spiritual energy and so we have the story of Psyche and Eros um, to play with. So when I did the event chart, I included asteroids named Eros and Psyche. I wanted to see what they were doing. What did they have to say? What's their story? So let's start with Venus. Venus is right here, um, heading towards the West, setting in the West when she went into Gemini tonight. And so I wanted to look at, well, who's in Gemini with her? We got Venus, we got Mercury, the ruler of Gemini at nine degrees. So we're gonna see what he has to say. This is a, a there's three Liliths. I'm gonna do an upcoming uh, workshop on the three Liliths. It's a really interesting journey, especially when I look at my solar return that's happening Friday, I've got Lilith rising. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that this birthday year is learning about Lilith. <laughs> so I'm going to do a workshop on the three Lois. Okay, and then we have Arrows. Arrows has showed up at 25 degrees Gemini. Isn't that cool? So we're going to look at their messages through Sabian symbol language, the wisdom there. And then uh, I wanted to look at Virgo because we have Psyche showing up there in the part of fortune. And I chose Virgo because Mercury is the ruler of two signs. Gemini and Virgo, and of course, Psyche shows up. So I'm like, okay, let's, let's tell the story. Let's tell the story of Eros and Psyche under this lover's reunion of Venus and Gemini now through July 18th. Okay, and the other thing I wanted, I took notice is the lunar nodes changed a degree while we were sleeping. <laughs> so they are bringing in fresh new, uh, energy for us to unwind in the south node in Scorpio and evolve in uh, Taurus in the north node. Now notice this green line, green line from the south node, the past, what we're unwinding, things that are bound, patterns that we want to break through, is being electrified by Mars. 21 degrees Aries, Mars is the ancient ruler of Scorpio, Mars is conjunct the moon tonight. Moon is at 24 degrees Aries. So this is also a prominent player. And of course, we're talking the lovers. We're talking Venus. Venus lover is Mars or Eros. And uh, Psyche is the counterpart to Venus in this energy. And what's interesting about Aries is he's at 21 degrees. Air, uh, <laughs> Mars is at 21 degrees. Aries and Mars is the twin to his sister Eris, who's conjunct the moon. And 21 degrees is the discovery point of Eris, 
the goddess of discord and strife. Twin sister to Mars or Aries in era in Aries <laughs> and uh, Aries and the moon are conjunct. So they have, so there's three levels of this. There's Venus in Gemini, there's Psyche, Psyche and Eros, and then the moon and Mars and Eris, all telling the story. And the south node is unwinding through this. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go into um, zero degrees Gemini. And the saving symbol is a, a glass bottom boat. So remember, Gemini rules the lower mind. And yesterday we talked about um, the conquest of the lower mind leads us to self mastery, right? So Venus and Gemini is saying, I'm helping you tame like the strength card, the lower mind through love, attention, awareness, gentleness. Like I'm not here to beat up you <laughs> for having discordant thoughts. I'm here to gently hold the mirror up to the lower mind so you can see this is the essence or the vibration that you are operating through. Because Gemini is about the quantum field that our thoughts, our words, our behaviors, that we are operating our day-to-day -day life. Venus comes and she holds up the mirror so you can see what is going on. <laughs> okay, so this clear black, glass uh, bottom boat helped you see into the unconscious. Water is emotion, so you're looking into the unconscious emotional body with a clear mind being able to see what is there with no judgment only love and gentleness okay so this is about how you express the venus is through inquisitiveness inquire question what's going on i'm interested i'm curious so your inquisitive nature prepares you for a surprise twist of fate to me, the twist of fate is let's bring in more love. Let's invite the psyche's arrows. Let's bring love into our world. More of that, please. More of that. Now, Mercury is here at nine degrees. And he's telling us this is a new path to realism. Like, let's understand what's in operation mode through our mind and let this uh, merge us or bring us to a new path of having a real life. And so this is saying, Mercury is the ruler here, the magician, awareness sets your orientation for your day-to-day -day life. So we have Venus gently looking into the mirror of our emotional unconscious energy and Mercury is saying, just become aware. Because when you're aware, you are then oriented in your day-to-day -day life. So this is mindfulness, just practice being more aware. Go slow, be gentle, be kind, be loving. All right, Eros. He says, don't forget about me. <laughs> I am coming here. See me? I'm right at your window sill. <laughs> Let me in. Like, okay. <laughs> so the Sabian symbol is the image of a gypsy coming out of the forest. So here we have this wild, free gypsy spirit. She's coming out of the forest. I mean, she's coming out of this uh, more wild nature place. And she's bringing with her, or Eros is bringing with him, spiritual beauty. And he, here's his message. Find your ground, find your place in your life where you are the most enthusiastic, where you are most enthusiastic in your life. This is what is consuming your time, your energy, and your money. So if you are spending time, energy, and money on things that are less than enthusiastic, in your life, because remember yesterday we were talking about, you know, be, be selfish in your pursuit of joy. That's a spiritual act right now. 
but always has been, but especially now. So where are you enthusiastic in your life? What makes you feel ebullient, enthusiastic? That's where you put your time and your energy and your moolah. Those are your investments. That's going to bring about the twist of fate. And, and the only way that you can really find where you're most enthusiastic in life is become aware of how you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. What are you doing? What are you focusing on? What are you thinking about? What are you, are you dwelling, right? We want to be moving that old energy out and bringing new fresh energy in with Venus. Now, Venus is saying, I'm being reflected up here by Psyche at 13 degrees, the sign or the degree of the goddess, Psyche. So at 13 degrees, she's in body, mind, spirit, wellness with goddess power. And so this is the energy of a family tree. And so Psyche, remember, what's your Psyche? What's hidden in the unconscious? She's saying it's in the family tree that you may be operating under influences beyond your unconscious control. That means you've got to become aware and you've got to say, hey, maybe the things that bring me down are maybe coming from my family tree. I need to remove those things from my psyche so that I can be, you know, make my path in life of my own free choosing. Remember, that's what Jupiter's and Aries, that's what his message was yesterday. Okay, so Psyche says, uh, traditions that you have inherited from your family tree should be cherished so that you can understand your natural birthright. So this is not saying that every tradition in your family tree works for you, but look at the ones that do. And if you find some family traditions, that give you that sense of enthusiasm or you look forward to them, the family barbecue or the yearly this or, or Sunday nights, we always did this or what are your family traditions, especially from a childhood perspective that you really, really enjoy? Super, super fun. Like one thing that's coming up for me is every year when I was little, we had, um, we got to go on a, a, it was like a week long, but we went to where my mom grew up, up in the mountains of Tahoe. And we visited my grandparents up there and it was super fun. We swam in the river. They had frog jumping contest. It was like this country life. And I just loved it. I looked forward to it. It was hot, it was fun. It was like nature was all around and it was really different from you know my home life. So I really got into being out in the country. So that's something I want to cherish. That's something that's a gift in my family tree. And of course, when um, you know I'm ready to pack up and move, I want to move to a more rural setting. I want to live in a more rural country life. I like the country life. So I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to maybe start preparing and planning in some ways. But what this is, Psyche is also revealing to you when you spend some time looking at your traditions from your family, um, Psyche is reminding you that remember, you as a soul chose to incarnate in this family tree for a reason. Some of us come in to do healing work as well as there's also gifts in the family tree that we wanted. I know for some of my clients, we you know dug deep into the roots and we realized, wow, you as a soul came into this family tree because there are some gifts here whether it's uh, you know, music or art or psychic gifts or you know, good health, good gene pool, <laughs> genetic something. So your soul chose the family tree you're born into for some specific reason that has gifts for you. Look for the gifts. Why did you come to that tree? Why, what are your gifts? What's your branch on the family tree's contribution? What are you, some of you might be upgrading the energy of your genealogical family tree just by being in the incarnation into it. So what are you, you know, kind of focus on what am I bringing into this energy field through my soul's, uh, you know, schwa de vie, my journey through life. So that's very exciting. So when you pay attention and follow the guidance coming from arrows and psyche, especially psyche, 
you get the, the blessing of the part of fortune. This is abundance. This is doing good work. This is joy and happiness for the soul. This is soul food. This is where you're like, okay, if I align and put my focus here, I'm building spiritual credits that I can, you know, bring into the material world at any time. And I also can take with me into the next incarnation. So at 17 degrees Virgo, this is about creative sensitivity leads you to deep, subtle knowledge of true reality. So when you spend time with Psyche and looking at this family tree and why you as a soul decided to come into this particular tree, possibly to upgrade it to make it more healthy because we're in Virgo at a body, mind, spirit level. Um, look at, you know, be sensitive and creative to the understanding of what that is and how it applies to you as a personality in this, you know, the soul known as Shannon or Sherry or who's watching the replay, right? Or as well as um, the soul known as Shannon or Sherry or who's watching the replay. It brings a depth of awareness and knowledge into your life. This is a really beautiful thing, which also brings wellness energy. Now, when you start working with the part of fortune, there's a way to activate it in the chart. And to activate it, we come into its exact polar opposite degree or polarity point, which we would find at 17 degrees Pisces. So I'm going to tell you the wisdom from that degree. And then we find somebody sitting there already. And it's Juno, the goddess of partnership. Where did I start this Venus and Gemini reading? The lovers. So Juno's like, hey, I'm holding the lovers card over here. You may want to come over and sit, have spend some time with me. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'm heading right over, Juno. Uh, keep the light on. <laughs> so 17 degrees. Pisces being the activation switch is about, is a reminder that you as the conductor of your life brings the, all, the whole of your life into alignment. So the energy says a conductor brings the orchestra into alignment. So you can have some fun, go to YouTube and type in, you know, best conductor orchestra moments or whatever. And you'll probably get some famous conductor and he's doing some beautiful performance and you just watch him and how, what he's doing and how he's bringing all the instruments together to perform this work of art that then brings so much joy to those who are listening and playing and participating in. So that's the energy that you want to activate in your life is how are you as a conductor bringing the orchestra of life into alignment around you. <clears throat> and then Juno says, well, I got something else to add to that. Come into sacred union with this energy, a master instructing her disciple. So Juno is holding court as a master energy, instructing you as the student <coughs> or the disciple. And she's telling you, teachers guide our psyches to unknown places. <laughs> And what does the soul enjoy more than anything is the unknown, <laughs> the unknown. This personality goes, wait a second, I don't like the unknown. I'm told that that's a scary place. But the soul goes, oh my gosh, the unknown is the best because that's where we grow and we learn and we experience. And we're coming from a place of you know, security and self-love and all these grounded, healthy um places within that the unknown is exciting. It's an adventure. Okay, so to stabilize all this wisdom, and guidance and teacher and opportunity to come into a higher expression of soul uh, that is you, is we come into the, no the nodes. First, we're gonna go to the south node. I always like to go to the south node first because that's where the energy is bound. We can unwind that, it frees the energy and it naturally goes into the north node. So because we have switched a degree, we went from 22 yesterday to 21 tonight, very exciting. The nodes flow backwards. So 21 degrees uh, Scorpio is the energy of self-determination, 
helps you with understanding your desires and giving you the power of fortitude. What is fortitude? Fortitude is get, keep going. <laughs> strength, strength to keep going. Fortitude is a virtue. You can develop it, cultivate it. So, but how you do that, the South Node is saying, how self-determined are you? You know, do you, and if you don't feel worthy or you feel less than, your self-determination will be weakened. Scorpio is about your power, your power as a soul. The soul is very determined and self-determined because it knows who it is. But when we incarnate into the land of forgetfulness, aka the underworld, which is kind of where we are right now, we have to use the, our power of fortitude to be self-determined, to you know, become more aware. And in that, we remember ourselves as soul. So we're, un, we're bringing that into a more empowered place. Now, Mars, remember Mars is saying, I'm connected to this energy. And Mars at 21 degrees, which is the discovery of his twin sister, Eris, and we are talking about twins, Psyche and Eros, and Venus and Gemini. Gemini is the twins. So I love Mars degree. This is the gate to the garden of desire. The South Node is saying, when you're self-determined, you will know how specific your desires are, and that's what you strengthen with fortitude. Right? Those are blessings. So Mars is inviting the past back into the garden of desire and says, guess what? Your vitality comes from new experiences. And what is Juno doing? She's like, I'm a teacher that teaches and guides your psyche into the unknown. Mars is saying, please give me new experiences because I come back to life. And Mars is your passion and your sense of adventure. Take a risk. Go out to a meetup. Say hello to someone that you're like, wow, that person seems interesting. I'm just going to introduce myself. What harm will it do? Best thing I will do is make a new friend. The worst thing I could go, wow, that person missed out. Because <laughs> I got my Venus mirror that's showing me that I'm worthy and deserving of happiness and joy and love. Okay, so at 24 degrees, the moon with Eris, this is the energy of a double promise. You get what you want or you want what you get. So let's get what we want at the same time, really enjoying what we have. It's a double promise. It's like a double rainbow. So if you can emotionally take your place into this space of believing, holding the truth that you can get what you want. And it could be a mantra you say before you go to bed, because you're bringing that into the unconscious. I get what I want. I get what I want. I get what I want. And I want what I get. I'm not afraid to want and to get and to receive and to have a new experience and to be okay with that. Whatever the experience is, I get all flat on my face, but I'm, it's going to make me stronger. Because remember, what was it yesterday? Was it Mars? Uh, yeah, Mars yesterday was saying conflict offers you the grit to grow stronger. Right? This is all about getting stronger through the Venusian mirror. So tell me what you think of this nighttime astral live. Comment where Venus is transiting through your house. What house is Gemini ruling for you? I'd like to hear. I'm gonna go live tomorrow night. Um, maybe just take a look at people's charts, answer some questions, have some fun. So I was looking at the transits and I was like, yeah, what's really going on here? Not much. <laughs> not much but I do want to remind you of my birthday sale that is going on let me just share with you especially if you're enjoying learning more about astrology you can come here and enjoy my birthday sale get the decoding your astrology chart it gives you all the basics for um understanding astrology the language uh it's a six module uh let's view it so you can see it 
Whoops, on sale. <sighs> so you can get the overview of the course. It's normally $444 on sale for 99. You can make it into payments if you like. There are uh, five modules and you have the opportunity once you finish the course to become an affiliate and earn commissions by offering it to your friends and family. Woohoo! There's also another great course to have in your library is Living a Lunar Lifestyle. This is where we learn everything there ever, you ever want to know about living with the moon. And let me tell you, if you want to learn astrology, you live with the moon uh, for at least six months and you will get your chart because the moon will go through every house in your chart in one year. You will learn not only astrology, you will learn about yourself. This is also a great course to have in your library. And these are all courses that are yours for life when you purchase them. Six module course, handouts, all kinds of cool stuff. And of course you can become an affiliate and resell the course and you can start earning commissions. So you could earn the money that you invest today. You can earn it back by just uh, reselling it. Use coupon code SHANBD22 a checkout to get the good price. And this price is only going through June 26th for the birthday. It'll still be on sale, but not at the super, super deal. So if you want a super, super deal, uh, go to my courses.lunarladies.com and get this $99 price. You can get all three uh, for $298 and make them into payments, right? And especially when you take the course and you resell them, you can uh, reap your investments back and then earn more money. All right. So if you have any questions about the courses, uh, they're on demand. Uh, they're, so you can buy it, log in, start enjoying them. And then I'm also offering a 25% special discount coupon for a one-to-one -one follow up after you've experienced the course if you have questions. Um, I'm offering my one-to-one -one sessions, 25% off for all those who buy and purchase during my birthday sale. I want to keep sharing the love. And then we can spend some time in a one-to-one -one via Zoom and go over what you learn, go over questions and go, what's next? So I'm looking forward to those sessions. And I really would love for all of you to have these courses in your library so that you can improve your lives, make, make life easier, better, fun. And then you have the opportunity to resell the courses and earn money. Yay, isn't that nice? All right, so I'll be back tomorrow night for Nighttime Astro Live. And we'll take a look, uh, maybe something will uh, tap me on the shoulder to talk about, but I, I'm more than happy to answer people's questions about their own natal charts um, tomorrow. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.